All right, what we're going over today is the hidden teapot. Now the hidden teapot, we're getting pretty advanced now and I want you to practice on using different techniques or combining techniques. So you may use slab, you may use coil, uh, you can use pinch, any number of things, whatever works best for you. Um, I've already got, you can even combine some throwing techniques if you have a wheel or access to a wheel. So here I have my slab rolled out. You could slap the clay out into a slab if you're good at getting it even. Uh, here I've rolled it out for the sake of time. So I've rolled this out with my rolling pin, two quarter inch thick, which is my paint sticks. Okay, as long as it's close, it can be an estimate. Um, I like it nice and even. So now I'm gonna put it over, and this is just, again, you can use any technique, any building technique, as long as you meet the composition notes. So I got a little plastic bowl here. If I stuck this slab over the top here, it would stick to this, especially this little foot. So I would put some paper towels over it or newspaper, any number of things that, uh, any paper product really. I'd put this slab over it as evenly as I can. Okay, and then I'd push those down. And again, always go slow. Don't just force one side. You want to kind of ease it in there, otherwise you'll end up with folds. Okay. Then to cut the bottom, you can use either your paper clip your popsicle stick, your modeling tool. I got a modeling tool here, but popsicle stick works just, just fine. And I want to get somewhere close around here. And I'm just going to kind of turn this, trying to stay even. I want to stay on a certain spot of the line. You may even want to use a stick as a measurement. Okay, so I want to stay above that stick by about an inch. And this first cut's just a rough cut. Later, I'll straighten it out again. Okay. Going all the way around. I don't use a needle tool on this because I don't want to mess up my bowl, the plastic bowl underneath. Okay, I'm gonna cut a little slice in there, take that off. So again, that was my rough cut. Save that for handles, things like that later. Okay, set that aside. So you'll see pretty even all the way around until I get to this side. This side's a little, hangs out a little low. So I'll cut into that a little. Okay, doesn't need to be perfect, but the closer to precision you get, the easier this will be later. So then this, personally, again, you can use any technique. I'm just giving you an example for the hidden teapot. And in the end, you're going to hide the fact that it's a teapot anyway. So it's going to have a lot of camouflage. I would cut this right in half. Okay, may even use a paper towel right there or a stick. I can set the paper towel, that would work really well if I had a paper towel here. So I can get a nice straight line over a curved piece. Or I could use my stick, my paint stick, trace a line, or a ruler. Keep tracing that line, trace the line. Then I would cut this. I would let it dry for about 30, 40 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna move this aside. I have one pre-made cooking show style. So this one doesn't need paper towels because of the fact that I put it on a plaster mold. This plaster mold was actually made in that bowl, just mixed plaster and water, put it in that plastic bowl and let it settle. And then uh, the plaster, the clay doesn't stick to the plaster. So now I have my two pieces and I've let these dry a bit. Didn't cut it all the way through. So you can see those hold up pretty well. If I use that piece, it would just flop on me. 
So this was just plaster, pour it into a bowl, let it dry, pop it out, and that's why it's all chipped up. So now my shape in particular, this is like a moon shaped. So you can see it was this. Now I cut it in half. I'm gonna move it this way. I'm gonna score and slip these two pieces together. And I'm really scoring this pretty heavily because I want it to hold together. It's gonna to be my seam. You may not have a serrated rib, a needle tool, popsicle stick, a paper clip. And most of my students right now are using paper clips. Okay, just scratching the surface of both, so scratch and attach. Score and slip. I've got some slip made up over here. Again, water works just as well. Slips just clay and water. Okay, so I've got a little slip over here. It's literally just excess clay added to water. This is really, really, really watery. I'm gonna add that on. I don't wanna make a sloppy mess, but I do wanna get everything wet, because this is our glue. Even just water and slip works, because essentially, again, slip's just clay and water, so when you force it together, all those little grooves, the water will kinda of dissolve the clay and stick everything together. So just like anything else we'd stick together, I want to pinch these seams together. Okay, all the way back. Okay, a little bit of blending. If they're too far off, you can always add a coil in here as well and blend that in. These are pretty close, so I don't think I'll have to do that. Again, that comes from the precision of your half. So if you cut it in half precisely, it should fit together quite well. Um, like at least this side did. I'm not sure about the other side. We'll see in a second. But if you cut it a little off to the side, you're gonna end up with one that's way inside and you can always add a coil again. This is just my approach to this. You can make it any, any way. I just want you to get one approach so you can be thinking about the way you'll approach it. So yeah, this blended fairly well. It's a little divot here that I probably would add a coil to. Okay, then I'm gonna move this aside. I have some, a piece or a slab. that I already rolled out and is almost the same dryness as the two pieces I just added. I just like that for uniformity. So I'm gonna let or set this on that slab. You'll see it's tilted a little bit. I wanna fix that. So it's tilted this way. So I need to cut a little bit off the bottom here. It's just an estimate. So I'll tilt that up, take that little chunk out. I didn't cut it all the way through, so I'm gonna cut that a little more precise, clean it up a little bit. Those little chunks will help me with scoring and slipping though. Set it back down. So right now I'm looking at the sides. I wanna make sure that both are popped out. I don't want one caving in like this side is. This side's a little caved in, so I'm gonna lift. Pull that out a little bit.
Right there, they look fairly symmetric. Again, it's your project, depending on what you're gonna to do to camouflage it, it doesn't have to be precise. So I'm gonna take my needle tool, trace around it. Again, you don't wanna dig underneath your piece because you're gonna end up blending this. So I'd rather have a little excess on the outside that I can blend up later. And I always tilt my needle tool. I don't keep it straight up, otherwise I get a lot of crusties here, which those could be blended, but it's just for precision sake. I like to tilt my needle tool. So not straight up and down, but angled. Okay, I'll cut a little notch just to get that excess off. And again, I could scrap this, use it for a handle later on. You're gonna need two handles on this. One handle for the lid of the teapot, and then one for holding the actual teapot itself. So now I'm going to lift this off. I don't want to lift it and turn it because I want to make sure I put it on exactly the way I took it off. So I'm going to take this. See my seam ripped a little bit because I haven't blended. I would also add a coil inside here later on. It doesn't really matter if I flex or bend this, as long as I put it on the same way, I can just match it to these edges. Okay. So I'm gonna score this little edge here as well. Little bit of slip. And this slip is really, 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 really watered down, really diluted. Uh, but it will work as long as my score marks are nice and deep. Okay, I'll put that back on. Again, I want it to match up to that edge I just cut. So I'm gonna do some little squeezing, bending, manipulating. So you can see how much, this side's all matched up, how much I bent it while I was scoring it, just squeezing it to get it back out to that shape. Blending my seam again. So now I'm gonna use the smooth rib. You can use your finger too. Just blend it up. But for the sake of time and speed and efficiency, I'm gonna blend with the back side of the rib just because it's nice and straight so you can see how much overhang there is here it's not a whole lot but it's a little more than I like so I'm gonna move this out a little more I really want to dig that clay up because I don't want that seam to be seen later on So here is the body of the teapot. I'm gonna go over some more of my blending just to hopefully keep it from breaking apart again. So it's always rough work first, really digging on it, and then later smoothing it out with your finger. If you have a sponge, you can use that. Okay, so there's the body of my teapot. Now, I gotta work on um, a spout, a lid, and later a handle. So I'll have a handle on my lid, and I wanna make sure I make a lid that doesn't fall off when I'm pouring tea. I also wanna make a handle that's balanced with the spout later on. I wanna make sure the spout is what we call pour proof. So if I put it at the bottom and it comes straight out, anything above that spout is gonna spill out, and I'll go over that in a second, but I'm gonna make the spout now. Again, you can combine or use any technique. I could use an extra piece of my slab. I could roll out a new slab. I could roll this. So this is just a scrap piece of slab. Okay, I could roll this around something round. Cut that off. Okay, 
I just want to make sure that it's tapered, meaning it's thinner on one side and thicker on the other, and the thin side is going to be the end of my spout. The thick side is going to be the part that attaches to the body that I've made already. So this could be a start of a spout. I could blend this. I would score and slip that together, but I'm not going to use this spout. I just want to show you an example of both um, slab and I'm going to use coil for this one. But yeah, we'll just pinch this together. And I could just cut that off clean. Okay. This would be the part that would attach to the body. So what I was talking about with the spouts. After I have this all cleaned up, if I have a spout here, I like the spout that it's not pointed straight up. Now let me explain what I mean. I like when they point up and then end up pointing sideways because um, when you pour, if it just is pointed up, it'll spill off the end of this. So I like to bend them a little bit. But I also don't want a spout that's way down here sideways because I can't fill the water of this teapot above where that spout is. It's just gonna pour everything out. So I like to cut these at a slant. The more I'm working on this, the more I think I'm liking this little spout. But I, I'm gonna show you a coil as well. So right now I'm cutting this at a, a diagonal. And like I said, I wasn't planning on using this, so I didn't clean it up as much as I normally would. But right now I would add this. My water could only be filled up to here in this teapot. So maybe I would add this a little higher or I can make one at the bottom and just make it come up more. So this would come up more. I'd have, probably have to put this one somewhere in this range, but I would want it. I don't want it pointed straight up and down. One, it's not very stylish. Two, when I pour this, that water is gonna drip down the side of my teapot. So I would bend this. Okay, I would bend that. I also like, just for the sake of style and aesthetics, I like to cut these. Okay, and I would pull this out a little bit. Get a little bit of water. And that's splitting on me because I didn't blend it very well. Again, I'm not using this spout. Okay. I would put this up. You want this part to be almost aligned with the top of your pot. So that way you can fill it all the way up. Um, it can be a little shy because you're going to end up with lid space on top anyway. So I'm going to take that one off. You can kind of see how it's shaped to the pot here as well. And I'll show you how to cut out the holes for the, the spout as well. So now I'm going to show you this one, which I rolled out some coils. I rolled out some coils, nice and thin, rolled them around my finger and joined them to make this little stack. So I rolled up a bunch of them, okay? Now I'm gonna blend, blend those coils. I'm gonna blend each of those. You can use your finger, serrated rib if you have it. I like the serrated rib just because it digs more and gives me more of a solid piece. So this one's a really short spout. I like longer spouts, um, but a longer spout would take some drying time. I just like the way they look. It looks more goose-like. So I'm gonna blend this in. I'm gonna blend the inside as well. I'm gonna blend the inside. I really need to make sure it's really important you blend this really well because you don't want it to leak. I don't want it to pour out any liquid. Let's blend in the outside as well. Make sure there's no holes. You can see why that's mildly important. 
and the fact that this will hold liquid. So again, wider body to thinner spout. And I'm gonna pinch this lip out just a little bit. So just pinching it. Use a little bit of water, clean up some of those cracks. Smooth this out. I'm just using my finger now for the, the nice work or the cleaning work. So I blended really, really hard with my serrated rib. Again, you can use popsicle stick, modeling tool, anything that helps you. Okay, now I want to see where this is going to go. Again, if I go right here, I can only fill my teapot to this high because the water or the liquid in there, the tea, will only it'll pour out from this height. So I'm going to end up having to put this a little higher. Now I'm going to cut out a notch right here. You can do that with a, a fishing string, any number of things. I'll show you once I cut it in a close-up. Okay, so I cut a little notch out so that it'll fit on this seam. The bottom part I'm gonna leave because I'm gonna end up blending that. So now you can see, I'll turn it sideways. You can see I can fill my teapot to about there, the bottom of my spout. So I'm gonna go a little bit lower because I don't need to fill this all the way up to the top. So I'll go a little lower. And I'm gonna use anything that's got a point to it. And I'm gonna trace around my spout. Okay, so now I know where my spout's gonna be. And I can use a straw to cut my holes. So I want it to be in there, and I don't want to just cut out a giant hole here, because it ends up trapping things uh, just behind the walls here. So I use a straw, and I like to do little patterns. So I'm gonna do one on each side, then I'll go one just below that. I found about five to seven holes works really well. You can do an odd number too if you really wanted to. I'm gonna do one right in the middle, right at my seam. Try not to make too many at the seam. I've got a little chunk of clay inside my, my straw to shove it inside or get it out one or the other. And most of these aren't gonna come out yet. I'm gonna poke them in with my needle tool, meaning from the teapot. And again, I like to do little patterns because when you look on the inside of the teapot, this one you really won't be able to see much on the inside, um, but I still want to make it so if somebody's looking inside and they see the sunlight coming in, they can see some uh, precision, if you will. Okay, so now I'll point this towards you. So you can see all those little guys. Later I'll get those once this gets to about leather hard. Poke those in. Got one stubborn one. There we go. So that'd be about enough. I'm gonna do one extra one right here. Actually, two more. As I cave in the side. Okay, one more at the bottom. I brought my seam apart just a little bit. Okay, so now I've got enough holes to pour my tea out of. I would take my spout, 
score and slip this on. score just outside or inside that little line that I traced from earlier. Yeah, I really want to score this on well. I can also add a coil around this too. Okay. Now I'm going to add some pressure down. Then I would take my modeling tool, blend what I can, if it's too far away, add a coil around this. Just roll out a small coil. You would add it around the base. This one doesn't really need it. It's got enough clay already. Okay, again, right now I'm doing the rough work, just making sure there's no holes. Then I'd come back, smooth it out with my fingers, maybe get inside. Make sure my shape, like on this side, it caved in a little bit. I'm going to pop that back out. Again, I would shape this a little bit. I might even add a little piece to it. Just for the more swan-like spout. One like spot again, that's need some blending. Okay, now we got a spout on there. Again, it needs a lot of blending, a lot of blending. Um, then I would focus on the handle now that I have a spout. So my handle, roll out a coil, any number of things, and I'll show you a finished example in a minute. I could roll out a coil, I could do a pulled handle, any number of things. I could roll this with a rolling pin. I'm not a big fan of traced or cut out handles. Um, I like free form handles more or less. So I could roll this like so. I could use a board and just press it down. So I have a board over here. I could press this down. It's actually not too bad for that quick. I always like to add a little moisture to my handles just because I'm about to flex this so much. Usually I'd let that sit for, I don't know, a minute. Okay, I like to take with a little bit of water and I sort of round this edge or even just an angle on the edge here instead of just a block. I used to do a little thumb track down here but I never really understood why I did the thumb track. I just did it because it was what I was taught. So just think about the form and function. What is it that I want it to feel like? Okay, so there's a handle. I'd curve that up. We're going to see how this flexes with that much or that little time of moisture. Always go slow with it so it doesn't just split or crack. So this one's going to be a little too big, which I'd cut it down. So I could add my handle here on the back. Just think about the way it's going to hold. You could do some wild whimsical handle, something like this. On the back, this one, obviously, form and function, I wouldn't be able to fit my hand in there. And it's a big teapot, so I'd want something a little bigger. But I want to make sure it's balanced with my spout. So I don't want a handle way down here with the spout up here. And I don't want one way over here, getting in the way of the lid, any number of things like that. I could also do a handle over the top. I could do one up over the top. But then think about where you're going to put your lid. So I may want to make this handle nice and big. When I hold this, is it going to be balanced? If I put it back here, is it going to be balanced? Maybe. We'll see. It kind of balances out with the spout. Up here, you know it is. It's kind of like a pail. Then I'm going to cut a section out here for a lid. Okay, I'll cut a section for a lid and I'll show you an example right now. 
after all is said and done, I've got my form, it's a teapot, I wanna add sculpted or added features that make it look like it's, you're hiding the fact that it is a teapot. Hey, I get a lot of dragons, uh, alligators, anything lengthy. Um, I've had students make it into realism pieces like a shoe or a uh, purse, any number of things like that. So I'm gonna show you a teapot. This one's thrown. Okay, this one's thrown. But the handle, you can see is on the top. It could have been on the back too. I'm not saying which one's better or worse. This one, as you can see, is really well balanced. Notice the spout comes out to the side. It's not pointed straight up. So this one wouldn't drip. You'd pour and it wouldn't drip after you stopped. Might have one drip, that's okay. But it's not gonna continually drip all the excess water off. Also, this is gonna fill all the way to the top because this spout is taller than the top of the teapot. Their lid, this could be pinch pot, slab, any number of things, but you're gonna wanna make a little slot or a little lip that will fit in there so that when you pour, it doesn't come out. So this one not only has that little foot on there, or the little extra lip to keep it in there, but it also has a little, almost like a coil around here. Okay, this one's thrown again. So you can do that with a coil, you can add anything you want, so make sure you keep the lid in. I've had students add a little notch on their lid right here, add a little notch. So the one student I'm talking about, he did this as a slab, added a handle, he made this out of coil, and then he put a little notch right on the side here, and then he cut a notch here. So he put the lid in where that notch fit, he twist it and it would stay on, okay? So that is the hidden teapot in a nutshell. Just make sure you're always thinking a form of function. Um, scoring criteria wise, make sure it has a lid. The lid must have a handle and you must have a handle on the teapot as well. You have to have an added spout. So that's the hidden teapot. Again, you're hiding the fact that it's a teapot. This one is blatantly a teapot. So if I had added a bunch of features, contorted the shape, uh, maybe made this into something else that's an added feature to an animal, uh, uh, realist piece, uh, any number of things. I've had students even hide the fact that it was a teapot by making a garden bucket, like a watering bucket. So the choice is yours, the rest is up to creativity.